So uh, I will talk about the uh, availability of precipitation. I, I have chosen this uh, this uh, topic because I uh, I thought it's more uh, linked with uh, the project, and uh, so I will focus mainly on this on precipitation. I will talk about recent trends and uh, the projected uh, changes in climate, uh, and uh, the main uh, topics will be. Uh, um, a focus on comparison between the 76 and 75 uh, uh, scenarios for Romania. Uh, then changes at regional scale with the uh, main uh, emphasis on uh, extremes. And finally, I will talk about some regional drivers of extreme variability that cannot be captured directly by the models. And here, um, machine learning methods, uh, AI methods, could be of very great help. Uh, and also what we are doing based on conceptual models can also be an input for um, machine learning techniques. Uh, why I show, because I saw most of us already saw uh, um, uh, the main uh, response expected from CEMIX-5 from uh, over Europe. So I thought maybe it would be better to show one of the first comparisons, at least for Romania, for our regions, uh, between Summit 6 and Summit 5. So what is the new things, the new features that are coming, uh, coming up uh, if uh, the previous conclusions are sustained or not, or damped or, or enhanced. So here I will start with precipitation field in the first column. Can you see my mouse? Uh, can yes, you yes, yeah. yes. Okay, yes, okay. Yes. So, thank you. So I can, uh, I can use it. So in the first line, we have uh, semi five results for winter, summer, RCP 4.5, uh, and uh, winter, summer again for uh, April 5. And here we have the semi six equivalent scenarios in um, SSPs. So, uh, uh, as radiative force, of course. So, what we can see uh, for Europe, for winter, uh, uh, there is a, a, an enhanced signal concerning the precipitation. So, uh, the precipitation where um, um, here are differences. Uh, compared to historical period in all the situations. Uh, so here differences are positive. So there is an increase in precipitation, mainly in the northern latitude, but also in the west. And we can recognize uh, a well-established pattern and comment in, in publications and articles that indicates a triple of change in precipitation field. That means a positive and increased precipitation here in this area, and then two bells of decreased precipitation, uh, it is uh, commented, it is discussed as uh, being a tribal pattern of response. So if I use this name, we can see that in the semi six, the tribal pattern has uh, an enhancement over the Western part uh, regarding still the Northern latitude, but also in mid latitudes. Uh, what we also see that it is maybe connected with um, the same uh, uh, thermal gradient that we will see uh, soon, uh, because this Labrador area and the uh, Western and North Atlantic is still cooling while uh, here is warming, so uh, the thermal gradient is created. Uh, but uh, what uh, regarding the winter in the uh, uh, highest uh, radiative force scenario, uh, there is a, um, a still increased enhancement in precipitation in the same areas. This enhancement is seen both in um, uh, semi five and semi six. So we can say that the uh, you know, regarding the precipitation, the summer is the same. So uh, the signal of uh, um, maintaining some uh, uh, exceeding amount of precipitation in the northern latitude, but not. Not the obvious signal and a decreasing, stronger decrease in the southern uh, latitudes is maintained, but uh, somehow diminished and uh, enhanced in uh, um, in uh, RCP uh, 5. Uh, 
So uh, overall, we can say that regarding presentation, the signal found in semi five is enhanced uh, again uh, in semi six, but also some patterns are dynamically shifted towards the western part. Uh, regarding Romania, we can see that still presentation persists uh, in experience in uh, semi six, what we did not see in winter in semi five. Uh, and overall, for Romania, in uh, both seasons, there is an increased signal in precipitation. I mean, if there is a decrease, here is a less decrease. And if there is an increase, the increase is more enhanced. Uh, the source of this precipitation, uh, just very quickly, we can see that it is uh, mainly from this northern track, storm track. Because the, the other uh, storm track that is really affecting Romania usually is diminishing. The Mediterranean is, um, is dry. Only here, the Adriatic is somehow providing us with humidity over this, this pattern. But we can see that the main uh, source uh, is in from the northern class. Uh, here I put uh, just to a comparison because this is up to 2050. And here I put semi uh, five before uh, before the beginning of the interval 2020-2050. So the 2011-2040 and 2040-2070. Why I put this? Because I wanted to emphasize once again that the increase in precipitation that it is quite seen in the field of a uh, uh, number of wet days uh, at the beginning of the interval, which happens that after 2040, after 2070, this signal disappears. So the number of wet days is decreasing completely. So what we see here as increasing amount of precipitation should be uh, uh, really linked and related to extreme precipitation and not to the number, number of wet days. And this, this is the main, uh, the main feature that, uh, that comes out from uh, this analysis. Just quickly regarding the temperature, again, we can see that the signal in semi 6 is enhancing the signal uh, obtained in semi five, yes. So the, the increase in temperature warming is higher in all the cases, as we can see here, comparing case by case. And what about Romania? We can see here somehow quite a, a hot spot of warming. Uh, I will explain because we have made some tests. We have simulated the storm tracks in uh, under a uh, current and future scenario. And we have seen that uh, in summer, there is a strong decrease, and I will show it a bit later, a strong decrease in storm tracks originating in the, the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, so the soil uh, is no more wet, it is in dry soil, and uh, uh, this, there is no more uh, cooling by evaporation over this area. So this is a feedback with evaporation that brings this huge area of, of uh, hottest temperatures and makes it, uh, this uh, part of Europe uh, a hotspot of warming. Uh, I will, uh, 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 just one single feature, the gradient with the Labrador, cool, uh, Labrador area cooling and uh, Europe warming is even enhanced in semi six. Yes, this has consequences for sure the first consequences will go to thermal wind and, and storm tracks and uh, uh, this uh, shift in the jet what's uh, what, uh, west, that we will see a bit later. Features found also in previous uh, ranges of time. Yes, this warming uh, in the northwest is this part of the moon. Uh, what about the seasons in Romania? Seasons in Romania, here we have temperature and precipitation. Uh, of course, we see uh, in average precipitation increase, temperature increasing strongly, precipitation higher amount because of the average, but about uh, related to seasons, we can see that only winter has a positive trend, but regardless the trend as amount, we have more precipitation winter, more precipitation spring, less precipitation summer, and all quite same 
amount, total amount of precipitation in, in, in uh, autumn. Regarding the trends, still increasing in winter, now increase in, in spring and uh, uh, autumn, and uh, decrease, net decrease in summer. Here is the temperature, I will not know it's increasing or Here it is a slide showing that uh, we um, have to be very um, um, interested in exploiting the semi six with the social economic scenarios together with graduate course because they tell us about uh, a lot of things at regional scale. So we really need to exploit this very new information that is put available on, on the sites. Like for here, as an example, uh, we can see that not the most, uh, uh, not the, the scenario with the highest schedule crossing has the strongest increase. Or, or uh, while here, we can see already the decreasing trend of precipitation that we already saw in, in the previous slide. Uh, so here we need uh, to use this information. It is uh, uh, thinking about 0 0.6 degree or, or even more differences. So uh, this should be really, really exploited and very careful uh, looked at uh, uh, at regional scale. Uh, up to 2030, we see almost no differences between them uh, in, in temperature and precipitation. Uh, here I put a, a, a parameter that can be very useful for um, just I will have to look at the Eugen, please let me know when I have 10 minutes. If you can. Yeah, okay, don't worry. It's thank like you. 15 minutes. Okay, thanks. Um, here it is a parameter that I want to comment just shortly on it because it can be very useful for people. Uh, uh, working with applications of climate change. This is a SPI index, uh, the Palmer uh, draft index, uh, that was computed by us from uh, both summit six and uh, summit five. Uh, and then we try to compare uh, the response. What we see, it is indeed an, uh, uh, an increase in the um, uh, draft in the southern part compared to summit six. And regarding Romania, again, uh, uh, increase of the draft, of the severe draft over the southern parts of India, southwestern parts, and uh, even eastern, central, eastern parts here. Yeah. Uh, what we see again, for example, semi here, where the radiative force is uh, less for the five, uh, we have a stronger response in this. Uh, uh, cumulative parameter, let's see, even if the decrease in precipitation was less than in this one. So the, the, uh, the combination between temperature and precipitation should be very carefully investigated and uh, it, is, it can be a uh, very useful information, again, pointing to the different scenario that are these are SPI indexes completed over April, September, uh, the period of um, uh, meteorological use. Uh, another application that can be useful, we think, is to uh, overlap uh, extreme uh, indices and to see if one region of, or another can be affected by cumulated uh, factors. Because I will show immediately why we have done this. For example, we see here Western Romania is affected by both uh, precipitation uh, more than 10 millimeters, this is severe precipitation, and uh, maximum temperature more than 1.5 uh, degrees. Uh, so this is a kind of vulnerable area. Uh, while uh, again here, uh, where humidity decreases and the maximum temperature is in, uh, in this interval. We see almost all country with specific uh, uh, with specific focus and uh, response stronger response in the south southern part south central southern part. In another study, we identified that, that this region, which is an uh, important uh, agronomical region of Romania, is really really uh, uh, at regional scale at sub regional scale. You can say a very affected area. So uh, this this kind of analysis can be interesting. But here, if we use the, um, 
uh, if, we, if we look at a, a regional scale, uh, and if we look at one parameter or another, this can be uh, this can hide in fact the cumulated uh, effect that I will show here. I will come back to the other. The cumulated effect of some of some other factors, for example, this southeast extreme area of Romania, it is really affected by a lot of cumulated factors like temperature increase, wind gusts. This is the area that's shown in our studies. The the uh, most significant uh, uh, persistence of the wind gust and the, even with some shift towards northern northwest. Uh, and these both uh, uh, have, uh, uh, no, these this are related. Here it is the precipitation response, uh, similar with what I already said, in spite of the fact that wet days, number of wet days decrease, there is an increase in heavy precipitation. And in turn, we obtain, uh, we, we uh, uh, the scenarios indicate that this area is also an area uh, affected, one of the most affected areas of Romania by, by uh, um, warning of um, fire events uh, to happen. So there is a cumulated effect of factors that can make this region, even if it is not for one particular parameter, in fact, but when cumulative factor can act, this one should really take into account this. Uh, this this uh, slide that I skipped is uh, just to show what I said in the first slide, that it is extreme precipitation that increase, even if the number of wet days and species some are decreasing. So uh, let's concentrate on this second, uh, uh, third and fourth slides. We see very well that uh, extreme precipitation and daily intensity index of precipitation are increasing while in spite of this decrease in number of factors. So this is a, a pointing to precipitation increase uh, through uh, the increase in heavy and extreme events and not in uh, usual rain in uh, low values. Now, uh, if I uh, have more 10 minutes or I don't know, I will try to go very, very quick because I don't yeah, know. There are 10 more minutes left. 10 yeah. minutes, same thing. What about the drivers? This, this is a, a, a thing that because uh, uh, regional scale, sub-regional scale extreme events are very difficult to be uh, predicted using the scenario of model. Even if the downscale exists, uh, at 10 kilometers, and um, there are other very local or sub regional events that really make the huge difference in terms of uh, weather variability and affects us mostly. So, we have uh, usually two kinds of approaches here. Uh, one, I will start with the, with the one that you know, and uh, this is very advanced in this project, potential drivers in learning process. So uh, one can uh, really use drivers of extreme, of local, of sub-regional extreme, and uh, integrate it into a learning process in order to derive the occurrence or the magnitude or the frequency or other parameters of the extreme events. Uh, and the more classical method is to uh, analyze the larger scale output in order to find proxies for uh, occurrence or preconditioners of, of the extreme events that occurs. Then finding, understanding the mechanism, uh, proving the mechanism on a larger databases of similar extreme events, then this indicator can be used really to have a, a hint or an indication for, for a prediction. Uh, I, I just want to make a parenthesis, the same thing can be used, uh, of course, in uh, uh, NLP uh, And I, at the, the end, I will just say one minute about how we intend to use this in seasonal prediction. Uh, I will show only a uh, few of them, just to have a, 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 an idea of uh, how we, we can use. First of all, we, I, I, we have here the plot of, um, uh, tendencies in precipitation. So these are trends in precipitation. Uh, and uh, uh, in, point, in, in every point of the country and uh, uh, every month. Uh, the first thing that it is very uh, stringent, this is over uh, currently, the first thing that it is very stringent is why? Why we have increasing trends in precipitation? 
in the of this period in months nine months. Another a second observation is if we can look very 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 closely, I don't say that we can look neatly, uh, it is that we can see a kind of rotation in areas of maximal precipitation or maximal anomaly of precipitation from summer to winter. And uh, uh, the thing is that the same, uh, we link this, this rotation of the anomaly, uh, of the positive highest possible anomaly with the uh, streak of the jet. So we computed for every month trends in the jet streak. We identify the maximum of the jet in the area. So we compute the jet streak in the area. And then we correlate it again with them. And we can see that both vary, co-vary very well uh, with a correlation coefficient of 0 0.3. So there are two, uh, there is a, a, a number two oscillation, if I can say, if this domain would have been periodically, of course. Uh, so we have two maxima and two minima, and we if we uh, uh, in both fields, this is the so one is the latitude of the maximum precipitation here we can be choosing the maximum of the area, and the other is the maximum of the jet, so the streak at three hundred. We can see that they co-vary. Further to, to to show this thing, so this was found to be very interesting thing because. Uh, really, it could have been an explanation for what happens in the last uh, uh, last decades of our country. Why why we have this response in in, in order? That, then to prove this, we used uh, uh, um, tracking model, a tracking algorithm that was developed simply by just using the mean level pressure. And I will show just the results of this integration. We integrated this model based on mean level pressure from scenarios and from historical uh, historical period. Here I show only the uh, actual period uh, spread it, uh, separated in the two, two slices of 20 years. And what we saw was very interesting. So first we can see here the, the changes in jet, the anomaly changes in uh, period two minus period one. So what happens? In the last 20 versus previous 20 years, we can see in, in uh, wind, uh, in winter, the uh, uh, de uh, development of, of a through here in anomaly field, of course, I, I, I share have to emphasize again. While in the summer, we can see this blocking type pattern that brings us, and not only us, over Greece, over uh, all these events with huge increased precipitation because of this blocking and persistent. Uh, humidity uh, attachment here and um, um, presumably maybe lower temperature for the summer. Why? Why this mega? So what happens here? Here we plot these changes in jet with the climatological tract, storm tracks. So we, we plot all storm tracks that affect Romania. And what we can see is that indeed the change, this anomaly in the jet, this is again the anomaly in the jet, fits precisely uh, this, this area. And so if we look at this area, one could expect to have increase of precipitation here in the northern part where we have the ascendance of this agiostrophic uh, secondary residual cell that crosses the, the, the jet. While here in the summer, one could expect in the southern part again, due to the same agiostrophic situation that is enhanced here. What we can see here in counting the number of tracks that are uh, crossing the area uh, in anomaly terms in summer and in winter, it is very nice because indeed in the domain D6, which is this one, in, in winter we can see an, extreme, uh, an increase in extremes uh, over the area, while in the summer over D3, which is this one, is in this. So we can say that indeed uh, the presence of the, uh, the anomalies of the jet stream can be correlated at least for this area with changes or with the variability of regional extreme over the area. Uh, what, uh, this uh, this a normal question that one can uh, put is, is, okay, we can see this link in present time. Is this link valid in the future? For this, we have run the same model, the same algorithm with tracks for the scenarios. What we obtain is again an extreme in the extreme tracks in winter, which is in gray, 
and the decrease in the number of tracks, extreme tracks in summer, uh, in opposite regarding the persistence, this become more persistent in summer and less persistent in winter. Uh, again, related still to uh, blocking type, type in, in summer and, uh, and has to check in winter. Here we have plotted the jet over the area, Euro-Atlantic area, and we can see indeed that in summer in uh, months 10 and 11, there is this switch in anomaly that means uh, uh, there is a, first, there is a very high difference and increase in the jet in months 10 compared to historical, which is black. Green is uh, RCP45, uh, red is RCP85. So here is the highest increase in the jet over all months. And uh, moreover, there is this switch. Here, there is a shift of the maximum towards northern latitudes. While here become, begins the uh, shift uh, towards southern latitude, which continues all along the winter, while the shift towards northern latitude. So more or less, the message is that we cannot a shift towards northern, like anomaly shift towards northern latitude in summer and towards southern in in, in um, winter. That is additional to the normal climatological shift with everybody. We know that it is like this. So more or less an enhancement of the wave, a prolongation of the wave, of the shift wave in both directions. And this is affecting and giving this extreme events in summer. Uh, if two minutes, do I have or should I stop here? Yeah, you can finish the presentation. I can finish. Yeah. So okay. this you will see in the, in the presentations, uh, some other indices that are uh, derived uh, by uh, they are derived in case studies uh, and used in seasonal prediction. Uh, for example, this is one index uh, estimating preconditions for blizzard event. And uh, the sum of preconditions is uh, uh, to have here a dipole anomaly on SST and to have a, a very um, a low jet, I mean, uh, unstable jet. So these two conditions, we put in two indexes and we uh, uh, compute months per month, the prediction of this index. And here you can see that for April, for example, this is an uh, index for late spring blizzard. Event. So this for April this month, we had already indication for a very unstable spring as we had, uh, okay. And the last one is for heavy precipitation for flood case studies. Uh, and here, just one, one, one thing I, I need to point here. Uh, it turned out in this case study of flood events, we analyzed flood events, and again, we find, we looked for preconditions at a larger scale. So we found the modes that are associated to uh, moderate, uh, severe, and extreme events. And we are using since then, you know, in uh, our uh, seasonal forecast, I mean, we project every prediction for the mass on these modes. And then we make a convolution of the results and if this, this index is high, we have a high uh, probability of occurrence of flood. But another thing that turns out and here um, machine learning techniques can be very helpful to downscale climate scenario or seasonal prediction that otherwise uh, could be very costly by uh, modeling approaches is that the flood event, one flood event here that was analyzed was captured only and only by a very high resolution model by three kilometer. Uh, 10 kilometer and 15 alternatives did not capture the preconditioning of the flood event. So this point, I, I, uh, I apologize that I took time, but really it is a point where uh, we can emphasize uh, a good uh, opportunity to use machine learning. And this is my summary. So in summary, changes in precipitation uh, indicate, as we saw, in the winter, in the summer, and so on, that point to extreme events. Uh, in CERIP-6, which are the very late first data we have, uh, the signal is enhanced. And finally, drivers uh, derived identified through mechanistic uh, modeling or case studies are really very useful uh, for a regional or sub-regional events, And this can be also input to AI and other methods. 
Uh, I will end by saying that indeed we, we think and started to use, to try to use uh, ML methods uh, using a convolutional network for uh, downscaling seasonal uh, forecast from CMWF uh, our regions. We start with temperature and we use a lot of predictors that we think are useful, like PBL, uh, altitude, topography, and uh, convection indices. But uh, we are, we are uh, now just at the beginning, just to illustrate that these techniques can be really, really used also here in our institute.